As a dog parent, you want to make sure you're doing everything right when it comes to the care and well-being of your four-legged companion. Whether it's choosing the right dog food or buying them all the best toys, you just want to give your dog a happy and healthy life. These are the 10 ways you are hurting your dogs without knowing. Number 10. No Exercise Dogs need exercise. It doesn't matter if they are 2 pounds or 250 pounds, or if they are puppies, adults, or geriatric dogs. All dogs need exercise. Exercise is crucial to mental well-being. Exercise is also crucial to us humans. So, get out there and exercise your dog as much as he needs. Number 9. No Nail Trims People think they are doing their dog a service by ignoring the long growth of his nails. He may scream and pitch a fit or even try to bite. But the truth is, unless you have one of those rare dogs whose foot conformation wears down his nails, your dog will need regular nail trims. Imagine never clipping your nails. Pretty soon your toenails would be causing you pain and the added length makes them more susceptible to being ripped completely off. Ouch! If you can't trim them yourself, take your dog to your vet and pay them to do it for you. They need to be trimmed every two weeks. Number 8. Wrong Equipment Equipment that doesn't fit or cause pain can do damage to your dog. I see several people who use no pull harnesses and head halters that are way, way, way too loose. The loose nylon then rubs hair off the face, from under the armpits, across the chest, and in other areas. Although most equipment shouldn't be tight, although gentle leaders and other head halters will seem tight to some, it also shouldn't be loose enough to rub. Think shoes, people! When your shoes are too big, you get blisters. When your shoes fit, they feel good. Number 7. Table Scraps Table scraps can kill your dog. I used to work in a veterinary clinic, and after every major holiday, we would have numerous dogs hospitalized because they ate too many goodies with their owners. Dogs don't metabolize fat like we humans metabolize fat, and they don't commonly eat a lot of fat, usually in their normal diet. You may think that you are spoiling your dog with a yummy, greasy piece of bacon, but his pancreas may not be able to metabolize it and it may cause it to get inflamed and your dog will be severely sick. In severe cases, dogs die from pancreatitis. Number 6. Medication Owners unwittingly poison their dogs with human medication all of the time. If the dog hurts himself or coughs, many owners will administer human pain medication and human cough medication. There are very few drugs that can safely cross species. Even prescription medications are not the same nor administered in the same dosage. Would it surprise you to know that dogs with thyroid disorders take a much higher dose than an adult human with the same problem? Number 5. Old Medication This goes hand in hand with the previous discussion about having worked at a vet I have seen owners administer old medications for what they think is the same problem, which can cause deafness and or death. Ear medication is a perfect example. People get used to taking their dog to the vet for chronic ear infections, and ear infections and getting rid of them can be problematic. So owners think the next time their dog shakes his head, scratches his ears, or has that notorious yeasty ear smell, that they can use medication that they have left over from the last round of drops and antibiotics. But if the dog's eardrum is ruptured this time, and only a vet looking down the dog's ear canal with an osteoscope can see the eardrum, the medication can cause permanent deafness. Medication that is safe for an intact eardrum will cause permanent damage to a ruptured eardrum. It just isn't worth the risk, is it? Number 4. No Training Dogs don't pop from the womb knowing what we humans expect. And this may shock you, but I want a different dog than you want, than your neighbor wants, than the person down the street wants. We all desire different levels of obedience and different attributes. 
but one thing is 100% the same across the board. People want a dog that is potty trained, and people want a dog with basic manners. Manners don't always equate into obedience, but you also can't have obedience without manners. So do your dog a favor and commit to making sure he or she is potty trained. Potty training isn't hard if you realize it's not all about you. Potty training is just like weight loss or anything else that is difficult but worth it. If you devote the time to it, you will see results. If you expect miracles or continue down the path where your dog is having consistent accidents, then you're not going to be successful. And dogs that go to shelters who are not potty trained have much less of a chance of making it out alive. And if they are adopted, they run a much higher risk of being physically abused and neglected. You can say much of the same for basic manners. Teaching your dog not to jump on people and to have some basic obedient skills will not only make him more endearing to you, it lessens the chance he will ever end up in a shelter or staying there and not making it out alive. Number three, wrong food. Feeding your dog the wrong thing can also be harmful. Very low-end dog food like Old Roy don't have the quality nutrition that most dogs need. Very cheap, low-end food is full of filters and things that aren't good for your dog in high quantities. I'm not going to turn this into a raw food diet versus dog food. I'm only going to say be careful and do your research. Many do-it-yourself foods lack in vitamins and nutrients that dogs need. Some also put your dog at risk for higher pH in urine, which can cause bladder and kidney stone. Even something as simple as broccoli can change the delicate pH of your dog's urine, which can cause significant health problems and require future surgery. There are also human foods like grapes that can cause renal failure and spices like nutmeg that can cause seizures and death. If you don't know that it is safe for your dog, don't feed it to him. Number two, baths. Dogs need baths. I know this comes as a shock to you, but dogs get stinky and the dirt and accumulated oils need to be cleaned out their fur on occasion. I do try to keep from bathing my dogs all of the time. When I had a dog with allergies, I had to wash him first every other day and then about once a week for maintenance. If you are using the right kind of shampoo and you're rinsing your dog's fur well, he can be washed often. But most of us don't want to have to wash our dogs too often. Once a month is a good goal to keep his skin clean and conditioned. Just like washing our skin is good for us, provided we aren't using harsh cleansers, it is also helpful for your dog's skin. Number one, you never brush his teeth. I am hoping you're going to say twice a day or at least daily. Now, how often do you brush your dog's teeth? If you don't say daily, then you are ignoring a huge part of your dog's health. Tartar and bacteria can build up on teeth, then irritate the gums, and that bacteria makes it way into the bloodstream and to the heart. Not brushing your dog's teeth actually shortens their lives. Think of old dogs that you have lost in your life. If someone told you you could have several more months or years with those dogs, would you do whatever it takes to accomplish that? I would. Brushing their teeth can add months or years to their lives. So go to your vet and purchase some CET toothpaste, prescription toothpaste that has an enzyme to break down your dog's tartar. Human toothpaste can kill dogs and put his toothbrush next to yours on the sink. Do let us know in the comments if you're doing any of these. Please subscribe to The Amazing Dogs. Thanks for watching.